Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Union City, Western, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. At 10.15 a.m. New York time, Tuesday, the 4th of July of 1989, the U.S. Independence Day, I experimentally discovered how the massively parallel process and how to do so across an ensemble of 65,536 processors that were the building blocks of a new supercomputer. I proved that the slowest 65,536 processors when used to solve the toughest problems in computational physics is faster than the fastest supercomputer. That experimental discovery made the news headlines because it was a milestone in the history of the computer. I experimentally discovered massively parallel processing by first theoretically discovering it in the early 1980s and subsequently experimentally discovered it on the 4th of July of 1989 and experimentally discovering it when research supercomputer scientists rejected and mocked the technology of massively parallel processing as a huge waste of their time. For the 15 years onward of June 20, 1974, I worked alone to find a solution. I believed in massively parallel processing supercomputing while sequential processing and vector processing supercomputer scientists dismissed the technology as utopia. I experimentally discovered massively parallel processing by first theoretically discovering how to synchronously communicate my extreme skill initial boundary value problems of physics and calculus and algebra. I experimentally discovered massively parallel processing by first theoretically discovering how to communicate my computational fluid dynamics codes and how to communicate those computer codes and how to communicate them via emails that I sent to and received from my 16-bit long email addresses. I experimentally discovered massively parallel processing by first theoretically discovering how to communicate those computer codes and how to communicate them across my new internet that was my global network of one binary million commodity email wires. My new internet married my 64 binary thousand processors and married them together and married them as one seamless cohesive supercomputer that had one processor at the crossroad of my 16 email pathways. Those 16 email pathways were mutually orthogonal to each other in the 16th dimensional hyperspace. That is, they were perpendicular in the 16 directions of an imaginary 16 dimensional universe. I discovered my new supercomputer 
by visualizing my email messages as firing like bullets out of my eyes and coming from computers in 16-dimensional hyperspace. I synchronously sent 65,536 or 2 raised to power 16 emails that were simultaneously received at 2 to power 16 email addresses that were each 16 bit long. I simultaneously received those emails at my 65,536 processors. I sent and received my 65,536 sets of answers or the initial and boundary values of my extreme scale initial boundary value problem of computational physics and modern mathematics. I visualized each set of data as my email subject line. I visualized each email as containing five subject lines. But I visualized each email message as a three-subject lined message. I received my emails at my 65,536 commodity processors with each of my processors uniquely identified by a unique string of 16 zeros and ones at the end of each computational circle of my computational physics code that encoded the algebraic approximation of my initial boundary value problem of modern calculus, I visualized those emails as fired from the processors like bullets out of my eyes. On the 4th of July of 1989, the U.S. Independence Day, I began each supercomputing circle by firing 2 to the power 16 emails across 16 times 2 to the power 16 short bidirectional commodity email wires. That's a total of 1,048,576 email wires, each akin to a short telegraph wire. Those 16 directions that are mutually orthogonal in 16-dimensional hyperspace enabled me to synchronously compute the mathematical solutions to my world record algebraic equations and to compute them across my global network of 65,536 commodity off-the-shelf processors that are identical to each other and equal distances are far and apart from each other. That was how I experimentally discovered how to communicate the answers to my computational physics codes and how to communicate them via the 65,536 five-subject-lined emails that I sent across a new internet that was my 16 network deep global network of 65,536 commodity of the shelf processors and sent along its 1,048,576 internal bidirectional pathways that I visualized as tightly encircling the surface of a sphere in 16-dimensional hyperspace. I received each of those five subject lined email message as a three subject lined email message. The reason I dropped two subject lines was that my last two subject lines contained two unique strings of 16 zeros and ones. Those pairs of 16-bit long numbers only identified my sending and receiving email addresses that I no longer need. For that reason, I dropped them. I don't need the sending and receiving email addresses. I don't need them in the manner you no longer need the envelope 
that contained the sending and the receiving postal addresses of a letter that was delivered to you. The secret to how I experimentally discovered how and why massively parallel processing makes new computers faster and makes new supercomputers fastest is cerebral, not instrumental. I had to know my instrument that is a global network of processors or that is a new internet and know that instrument both forward and backward. I had to own the knowledge of extreme scale computational physics, not merely no physics. I had to own the knowledge of extreme scale algebra, not merely no algebra. I had to own the knowledge of the partial differential equation of modern calculus, not merely no calculus. I had to own the knowledge of the parallel processing supercomputer, not merely know the sequential and or the vector processing supercomputer. The 4th of July of 1989, the U.S. Independence Day, was the day I experimentally discovered the parallel processing supercomputer that computes across my ensemble of 65,536 commodity processors that we are the building blocks of a new supercomputer. My ensemble of processors is a new internet de facto. I owned the new supercomputer because I experimentally discovered it as a new supercomputer that is the world's fastest computer. On the 4th of July of 1989, I knew my new supercomputer as the fastest computer in history, while other supercomputer scientists knew my new supercomputer as the slowest computer in the world. When you've discovered something such as a new supercomputer that was previously unknown to anybody, you own it, not know it. And when you give your first lectures on your groundbreaking this supercomputer discoveries, such as the first fastest calculations executed across a parallel processing supercomputer, the jaws of the naysayers that said parallel processing is a waste of everybody's time must drop. By definition, a groundbreaking supercomputer discovery should make the news headlines across the world I was in the news headlines in Saudi Arabia, Kenya, Nigeria, and other countries. I was in the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal because I experimentally discovered how and why massively parallel processing makes new computers faster and makes new supercomputers fastest and because I experimentally invented how to use that new supercomputer knowledge to build a new supercomputer. And most importantly, I privately felt it in my bones that I, Philip Emagwale, made a contribution to the development of the computer. I experimentally discovered Massively parallel processing by evenly dividing my system of 24 million equations of algebra that was a world record on the 4th of July of 1989, the U.S. Independence Day. That was the day that I discovered 
how to massively parallel process across a new internet that is a global network of commodity of the shelf processors that we are identical to each other and that we are equal distances are far and apart from each other. I evenly divided my extreme scale initial boundary value problem of computational physics and modern mathematics and divided them across my 65,536 commodity processors. Then I assigned to each processor the computational task of processing or solving an equal size subset of problem that comprised of a system of 366 equations of algebra. Due to memory limitations, it was impossible for me to store and solve two subsets of 366 equations and to store and solve them entirely within one processor. And it was impossible to store or to cram those 24 million algebraic equations into the slowest processor of the year 1989. So I had no choice but to solve such extreme scale problems arising in modern algebra and solve them across a new internet that is a global network of 65,536 commodity processors that we are identical to each other and that we are equal distances are far and apart from each other. In other words, my hero's quest to the terra incognita of supercomputer knowledge was to find the new supercomputer that was hidden in the bowels of my 16 network deep ensemble of processors and email wires. I experimentally discovered that new parallel processing supercomputer and I invented that technology by emailing each subset of my initial boundary value problem that was algebraically approximated and that comprised of a system of 366 equations of modern algebra and emailing each subset in 16 directions that are mutually perpendicular to each other and to 2 to power 16 email addresses. For each of my email address, each of my email address was a unique string of 16 zeros and ones that had no at sign in its middle and no dot com at its end. That is, I sent my 65,536 five subject line emails, not only outward and along the 16 directions of my 16 network deep internet, but I also received my emails as three subject line emails from those 16 directions. I sent my 64 binary thousand emails simultaneously and from as many processors and I received my emails synchronously and from as many processors. I visualized the surface of that sphere as delineated in the manner the surface of a soccer ball is delineated. The vertices and the edges of my delineated sphere has a one-to-one -one correspondence to the vertices and the edges of the truncated icosahedron that's well known to solid geometers. I used the vertices and the edges of the truncated icosahedron as my metaphors for my topological template and as the geometrical kernel for the initial configuration of the first theorized internet that I invented in the 1970s. I named my theorized internet 
a hyperbole. The cohesion and contextualization around my new hyperbole internet developed over 16 years onward of June 20, 1974 and developed over its 2 to power 16 processors and developed over its 16 times 2 to power 16 bidirectional email wires that married those processors as one new cohesive whole supercomputer. My Eureka moment of discovery occurred at the speed of light, but my journey to that moment was made at the pace of a snail. On June 20, 1974, I was a supercomputer hacker or a one-trick pony that repeated the same miniature code repeatedly. My first supercomputer program sequentially solved a small system of equations of algebra. In the summer of 1974 and at age 19 in Oregon, United States, I lacked the mathematical maturity that I needed to use to invent a system of coupled, nonlinear, and time-dependent partial differential equations of modern calculus called Emma Gualis equations. I lacked the mathematical maturity that I needed to approximate those partial differential equations and to reduce them to a large system of equations of modern algebra. And I lacked the supercomputing maturity that I needed to solve those algebraic equations on processors and to synchronously email them across processors. Without the next 15 years of intellectual growth and maturity, I could not have theoretically and experimentally discovered the fastest computation that could be recorded via the massively parallel processing supercomputer and discovered that fastest computation back in 1974. But 15 years later, and on the 4th of July of 1989, I had grown from a 19-year-old supercomputer programmer to the wiser 34-year-old wizard that was in the news and that experimentally discovered how and why massively parallel processing makes new supercomputers fastest and that was honored on postage stamps and honored for his contributions to developing the computer. Two of those postage stamps had the inscription, quote unquote, supercomputer genius. Back in the 1980s, I was the sole full time programmer of the most massively parallel processing supercomputer ever built. The genius is the ordinary person that found the extraordinary in the ordinary. Each of my 65,536 processors was the slowest processor in the world. Each of my 1,048,576 email wires was akin to a short telegraph wire. I was compelled to experimentally discover the extraordinary massively parallel processing supercomputer and to experimentally discover that precursor to the modern supercomputer and to experimentally discover that new knowledge in the bowels of an ensemble of the slowest processors and email wires. On the 4th of July of 1989, I became the first person to see in the 16th dimension the new massively parallel processing supercomputer 
that was unseen in the third dimension. I saw the never before seen supercomputer technology. I saw a new supercomputer and I saw its technology by visualizing my ensemble of processor codes that I sent to each processor that was a member of my ensemble of 64 binary thousand processors and visualizing it as a new internet instead of as a computer. I saw a new supercomputer and I saw it by visualizing my 65,000 536 commodity of the shelf processors as having a one-to-one -one correspondence to the vertices of the hypercube in the 16th dimension. I saw a new supercomputer and I saw it by visualizing 1,048,576 email wires as having a one-to-one -one correspondence to the bidirectional edges of the same hypercube. That hypercube's 2 to power 16 vertices became 65,536 crossroads where the modern supercomputer that executes the world's fastest computations met the new internet that I experimentally discovered delivered the fastest electronic messages. I discovered that the computer wizard is the ordinary computer programmer that discovered his new supercomputer inside a new internet. The history of civilization is the history of technology. Who domesticated the first chicken? Who domesticated the first goat? Who rode the first horse? The names of ancient scientific pioneers are lost in the midst of time. Who solved the first quadratic equation? Who programmed the first ensemble of processors that led to the discovery of the modern supercomputer? Parallel processing, the technology that makes the new computer faster and makes the new supercomputer fastest, is the most important invention in the history of computer technology. Dalono, Afambu Chukura, Philip Emagwale, Abum Onyo Necha, Biaka Fumna Emagwale dot com, Commercia. I'm Philip Emagwale at Emagwale dot com. Thank you. Insightful and brilliant lecture. Insightful and brilliant lecture.